Hello, this is Hero of Legend, and welcome to episode three of the Nin- of Hero of Legends Nintendo Discussions podcast. With me again, as always, is RK sixty four and RK one two eight three on Twitter. And today we're talking about Nintendo and mobile. Yeah, um, we we started doing. This is going to be a bit of a short one today um, because RK has uh, other things uh, to do. Uh, if you do want to just mention what they are, just as a shout out. Okay, um, currently I am planning to do, a uh, plan, me and, uh, Montrella are, uh, currently getting ready, ready to relaunch, um, FreeWire, and we're gonna be launching a bunch of stuff tomorrow, and I'm just getting a bunch of reviews ready and stuff, and it's, it's also pretty late at this point, and, um, I, that's why I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna try to talk a little bit lower, so if my voice isn't very loud, I just wanna apologize in advance. They're not ready to make it four wire yet, so. <laughs> why? Why is it called f- three wire, anyways? Um, to be honest, um, it be, um, I think the why I th- it, it means connection, but um, even after he explained it, once Farrell explained it to me, it's still a little bit confusing to understand. But the name stands out, and the logo stands out, so. It definitely is something you notice when you first see it pop up. Hmm. It stands out. That's a cool idea. Mm hmm. Alright, <clears throat> so we're talking about specifically the new surprise announcement of Nintendo's second uh, main mobile game, so we're not including Pokemon Go here, Super Mario Run, which was just announced today at uh, the Apple 2017 event, uh, Nowhere. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it. this is. Uh, Number two of Nintendo's so far five mobile game plan again, which uh, Pokemon Go is not a part of. That is actually by the Pokemon Company independently and uh, Niantic, who developed the uh, application. But uh, for today, we'll be mainly talking about Super Mario Run and just about N- Nintendo's mobile efforts in general. Uh, Mario Super Mario Run is scheduled to come out, I believe, in December. This year, for uh, so far, exclusive ex- exclusively for Apple's uh, iPhone and iPad, but is going to come out on Android sometime next year. It could be any time, like from January or something. I don't really know, but um, they just said it's not happening on Android this year. But what does it really matter? It's just going to be a month difference, anyways. And, most likely. And, yeah, most likely. And the other two we know so far is an Animal Crossing game and Fire Emblem. Uh, the fifth one, we have no idea what it's going to be about, so we'll we'll probably hear about that by the end of uh, by March 2017 when Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem are scheduled to re- release prior to. So yeah, um, why, don't we, why don't I start with you? Uh, what do you think about this? Um, honestly, I think it's something I'm surprised Nintendo hasn't done already, specifically with a Super Mario Run, as essentially if you ever played. Um, the Rayman Jungle Run and Rayman Fiesta Run games, it's Nintendo's take on that, where they adapt the, uh, adapt the game's core mechanics in Rayman Jungle Run and Rayman Fiesta Run. Rayman has all the moves he does in Origins and Legends. He can punch, he can hover, he can run on walls, he can wall jump, but it's but he Rayman is stuck going right, with the level design being constructed around this constraint. And those are some of the best mobile games I ever played, personally. So Nintendo basically doing that take on that is a very smart decision. And the reason is because Mario, the new Super Mario Bros. format, has a lot of those same core mechanics that Rayman has. In the sense that Mario can wall jump, Mario can, which, yeah, Mario can wall jump off walls, and that instantly opens the door to a lot of different level design. Uh, Mario is, has all these uh, parkour-like abilities. If you notice in the gameplay footage in the trailer, he, uh, he hops over Goombas mm-hmm. and some sorts over objects. So, And there's also special blocks in place where there's pause blocks where Mario touches them and he stops in place until he touches the screen again. Or the backwards blocks, and if you jump as you're on the blocks, Mario springs backward as if he's doing the backflip for Mario 64, Sunshine, or the Galaxy games. Mm-hmm. So what makes this game really interesting is that it's not free to play. It's, uh, technically, <coughs> it's technically, sort of half, half and half. Yeah, basically, it's, it's free to download, and after playing an X amount of content, 
you kind of hit with a wall, and basically then you can buy the game. But it's essentially, um, you get the free download, and then you can purchase the full game later, rather than it's a free-to-play game. So it's a nice middle ground between the two extremes, and a bunch of different... And if, if you've never been to an Apple event, um, there's as a, there's going to be six worlds in the game, maybe more, but we saw six worlds, and each world has three to four different levels. So the game's going to have a good bit of content to it, and with the Mushroom Kingdom mode, where you could, where you see all the toads you collected, and the toad battle mode, where you you race against a um, NPC based off of another player, and the more toads you get, the more toads are in your own Mushroom Kingdom. It really feels like a nice way to take the new Super Mario Brothers side of the 2D Mario games and adapt it to um, to mobile. Mm-hmm. And that is something that I think Nintendo should have done for a long time. I think Sonic should have did this to an extent too. Copied Rayman Jungle One. Yeah, because Sonic already had his uh, major mobile game with uh, Sonic Runners, and it doesn't even exist anymore. No, it doesn't. It's it, Sonic One is I thought was going to be like Rayman Jungle One, but instead it was a basic runner. What makes this Ma- Super Mario One? So interesting is that A, it is like Rayman Jungle One, Rayman Fiesta One, and that is a really, really good sign. But it's also Apple has some involvement with the game because they all have some deal with Nintendo. Because when um, they told, when the game was announced, Nintendo said, "Add out Apple." Uh, one of them, someone said, "Add out partners at Nintendo." Add out partners at Apple. So there's some like cooperation involved in this game's development hmm. and honestly it's just nice to see a Mario game on mobile but done right I just like the idea that Nintendo is <clears throat> re- uh, j- walking outside of their comfort zone in terms of like first of all they're in an Apple event for fuck's sake I mean this is something that people never thought would happen and it's just such a let me put it to you this way <clears throat> this was such a an impactful event that N- Mario was trending higher than <clears throat> I think both the uh, Apple in general and the and iPhone 7 or whatever, but also Sony and the PS4 Pro, which was also announced today. And as far as <clears throat> uh, specifically with Sony, Mario was trending higher on Twitter than Sony and PS4 Pro separately combined. That's how, and N- Nintendo literally just pulled the rug from under Sony's feet like that, and it's just like, wow. Well, to be fair, the PlayStation I saw some of the live stream and I didn't. I didn't watch any of the uh, PlayStation events. I just caught whatever details popped up afterward. It really doesn't seem that much like a big deal. The big <laughs> sense. No, it's the- like uh, like the whole point of the Neo just seems like it's a almost a rushed attempt to combat the Scorpio by Microsoft, and it doesn't even seem but to the, do, be all that good. Announced, but this was announced before the Scorpio. It was uh, the story popping up before the. Xbox Scorpio thing appeared, and the, the, I think the biggest source of controversy around the whole Neo thing, and I'll just kind of wrap it up before we get off topic, is mm-hmm. it's, I thought it was going to be really bad because it was going to be this big, massive spec jump over the normal PlayStation 4, making situations like Hyrule Warriors Legends more common between PlayStation 4s and PS4 Neos, but with the PlayStation 4 Pro, we saw footage came out of games like Spider-Man, um, Spider-Man, Horizon, Call of Duty, uh, Mass Effect, the, the, the newest Mass Effect was announced, shown off for the first time, which was pretty cool, mm-hmm. and basically, it doesn't really seem like the visuals, while well, they look nicer, the games look, look very similar to what we saw at E3, and all those other things, so it's not like that big of a jump, and as someone who is interested in trying to get a PlayStation 4, but it's too expensive, yeah, I know you told me. This, this is going to significantly lower the price point of the original PlayStation 4 as they officially announced the PlayStation 4 Slim at this event. Mm-hmm. That's 299 The PlayStation 4 um, Pro is 399 So the original PlayStation 4 is likely going to be lowered to like 250 260 So it is re- this is a really great time if you've never owned a PlayStation 4 console yet. Mm. But anyways, back to Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. Um... <laughs> um this is a big deal to me because Matt, 
like like you said, apples of apples events were huge. Many people see them. They're one of the most popular things out there. It's weird because and, Nintendo is never usually a guest at someone else's event. I think this is one of the first times. I know they were they did a po- when Pokemon Go was announced. Was that an actual uh, independent event, or were they with Google or something when it happened? I don't remember. I don't really remember when it was announced. <clears throat> it was announced like la- like September last year, in fact, I believe. But um, I'm trying to remember what where they were when they announced it. I can't remember if it was just an actual like Nintendo made event or not. But it, either way, this is probably the first time that Nintendo has ever been a guest at someone at a major corporation's event for anything. Like uh, it's just unprecedented. Well, I think it, the reason why I'm kind of like not super shocked is that, in a sense, of the mobile realm, Nintendo is the guest rather than the star. Oh yeah, yeah. In the sense, in the sense that, when it comes to mobile, Nintendo doesn't have a Nintendo phone. It is a phone. So Nintendo showing up in an Apple event, well, it is. While well, you're absolutely right, is a really big deal. It is something that should be expected mm-hmm. because. Nintendo is going to be announcing a big game. They're going to be announcing Mario mm-hmm. and its mobile devices. It's the equivalent of saying Mickey Mouse is coming to X event. So what are you going to do? You're going to basically roll out the red carpet and go to an event where a really trusted partner can be there. What is that partner? Apple. Apple is huge in the mobile world. Many people buy really expensive phones every year for no reason, whatever. But point is... It's a big deal. So Nintendo being at this event to announce one of their most game-like mobile games mm-hmm. is a pretty big deal. And actually, in tradition of what Apple normally does, because if I remember correctly, the last Apple event in 2015 showed off a bunch of games. So this is not really shocking to me, but it's still really nice to see. What's uh, interesting is that this is actually the first actual mobile game from Nintendo since Mi Tomo, their actual first mobile app, was just nothing more than a social uh, a social app of sorts. This is the yeah. first actual video game that Nintendo is playing on mobile devices, and uh, I'm really interested in seeing where this goes and how it, it, how it turns out. <clears throat> what I'm actually wondering is if the rumors are true and that Nintendo will start bringing their mobile games to NX. Like, Super Mario Run would almost surely be the headliner in terms of that kind of, uh, like, mobile to NX uh, ports or whatever they're doing. I mean, it makes t- way too much sense. I mean, you got one of Nintendo's in-house teams, like specifically Hideki Kono, Miyamoto himself, working on the game. It'd almost be foolish to not make a- an NX version of S- Super Mario Run at some point, if not at launch. Hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens, and I wouldn't be surprised to see more mo- see the game like Nintendo mobile games release on Nintendo's consoles or updated versions that are more game-like on Nintendo's consoles but I think the point what Nintendo's trying to do with these is bring them to the platform everyone owns, every, most people own smartphones, then they're going to use these games to appease people to be like, hey, this is Mario, you another Mario, right? Come on, he jumps, he, he, he kills Goombas, he flicks the turtle shells, he throws fireballs, you know him, kids, right? And the kids mm-hmm. be like, yeah, I know Mario. You know, my my parents grew up with him in the arcades and the NESs. This is cool. I can see why people really like this character. And then the new games come out, like maybe Mario Maker an NX. And then the, then parents will be then the, then the kids will be like, "Hey, mom, dad, I want this." And the parents are like, "No, you can't play that. You have this mobile thing you can play." But no, I want that. It's different. So this is what I think Nintendo is trying to do with their mobile games. Well, literally, that's they, they said they said as such, and yeah, Pokemon, that, Pokemon Go is already doing that. Where mm-hmm. <clears throat> after Pokemon Go came out, po- Pokemon games on Nintendo 3DS and whatnot just jumped in sales. Exploded. Mm-hmm. I saw the. I remember Nintendo sent me a press release about that, and it was huge. Like a Pokemon Omega, oops, sorry, Pokemon X and Y games that came out a long time ago got massive sales spikes, and Pokemon Omega Ruby and Sapphire got huge sales surges too. Mm-hmm. This even that's why I think some of the smaller Pokemon spin-off games as well. So you're absolutely right. This is going to be a big boon for Nintendo's hardware sales. Mm-hmm. Like they're basically doing mobile. Pretty much in every be- in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Like they're not, it's not replacing anything. It's but an extension and as a a boost for their own uh, systems and games. Exactly. Yeah. So Nintendo doing mobile games isn't 
them being doomed or whatever. No, they're not doomed since 1889 or anything. So they're, uh, you know, they're doing they're doing this in all the right ways, and I'm really happy to I see that. I only wish I only wish Iwata was here to see this, especially how, with how huge Pokemon Go uh, turned out, and also he literally worked on that to basically the day he died. I remember hearing about that, and he he like is likely seeing the success of his hard work mm-hmm. where he is, and he, like he's likely really happy. He worked really hard with Pokemon Go and all these other Nintendo projects. And he is likely really proud of the hard work him and his teams put into these titles. Mm-hmm. I hope so. So, you want to move on to Pokemon Go since you brought it up? Well, um, why don't we first just, because uh, we probably don't have a whole lot longer, um, talk about like just maybe Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem, because those are the well, next, the next uh, major mobile games from Nintendo still to come. What do you think we'll see? Um, I think with Fire Emblem... I really don't know what to expect from that. What I'm expecting is some like what like it's basically going to be a simplification of what we saw from like what we saw with um, Super Mario One. Super Mario One is basically Mario running and jumping and going right. But I don't think people would be happy if they saw um, Crom just running and jumping over uh, things. <laughs> I wasn't talking about that. I don't know. About... I don't know. Super Crom Run sounds pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, t- 10 out of 10, game of the year, mobile game, from Apple Store, everyone buys it days year, but the point is, um, I'm talking about like taking the Fire Emblem turn-based elements and making it simple enough so that the core mechanics are present, but it's still simple enough that mobile gamers who may not, have, may not, may not play the console games can jump in and still have fun with the game. Same thing with Animal Crossing is tailored made to mobile, mm-hmm. where they could easily just have virtual analogs that characters move around, and you have an interactive touch button, and that's basically a iOS Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. You really don't, you really don't have to do much for Animal Crossing to make it stand out. And I could even imagine situations where they have amiibo support for their mobile games, like maybe tap an Animal Crossing amiibo on a touch screen, or maybe you can use that um, special um, NFC read a thing and sync it up with a mobile phone because that is with Bluetooth so you plop the thing on the table you plant the Amiibo there you sync your iPhone to it or Android phone to it and you can interact with Amiibos in mobile games that might be what the next step Nintendo's doing in Animal Crossing would be a nice adventure to play with that with but Fire Emblem is the most interesting because it could be like maybe a visual novel type game because Fire Emblem does have that element to some extent hmm. with the character portraits and dialogues or and that'll be a nice natural fit to mobile because you can just tap the screen you can tap options maybe you can even have pseudo battles and you can use the touch screen to control them but there's a lot there's a lot of possibilities hmm. i'm also wondering if maybe <clears throat> intelligence systems who basically work on every entry will work on this as well I think they will. If Miyamoto, if some of the core 2D Mario team was working on Super Mario 1, and rumors, and I remember hearing that the Mario Kart 8 producer Mm -hmm. is helping out these mobile games, I would not be surprised if Intelligent Systems has a team, maybe the the Paper Mario Color Splash team, since the game was reportedly finished, work on this mobile game for Fire Emblem. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Uh, What do you... What, what what would you expect from these two mobile games? It's hard for me to say. I mean, I'm not a mobile game player, so I don't really have a whole lot of knowledge of all these different uh, styles and whatnot, just from personal observations, like of like online or whatever. Um, like I would obviously expect them to take after their most recent entries, like for Animal Crossing to look like New Leaf, Fire mm-hmm. Emblem to look like Awakening and or Fates. Um, like how Super Mario Run is literally using uh, su- new Super Mario Brothers use uh, assets and everything, which is a great idea, and that's what I always expected it to look. Um, that was a really good move on Nintendo's part because they're essentially spending nothing to make the game. They just use assets they have mm-hmm. in store for they had they had made a long time ago. Mm-hmm. They just got to instruct them differently with new level designs. I mean, there's probably more original material in Miitomo than there is in, Mar- in Super Mario Run. <laughs> Most likely. I mean, the house, I, the, I mean, your house in Mitomo probably has more original material in it than Super Mario Run looks. 
I do like the nice. I do like the new art they drew. <laughs> for Super Mario Run. Yeah, Super Mario Run. It, it's keeping in tone, and I, I I've been noticing this with some of the Mario games. Mm-hmm. Ever since Super Mario World, they've been going back to like the art style used in Japanese promotional stuff for Mario Three. Oh yeah, that's and, um, the old stuff was by um, Yoichi, Yoichi uh, Katabe, um, who actually I think we talked about this uh, in a podcast or two be- uh, before, but so. like he used to work at uh, Toy Animation, worked with Hi- um, uh, Miyazaki, and. Yeah, and uh, like I know he and Miyazaki worked together on Nausicaa, for example, but wow, I think that's the only that's major cool. film he, uh, Katabe actually worked with um, on uh, with Miyazaki on. And yeah, he he his last major credit I know of was 3D Land, but I don't know if he actually worked on the games like Super Mario 3D World or whatnot, or someone was just tutored by him to basically take his uh, following his footsteps and literally emulate his style. Maybe, but I do like the art that, like, the character portraits and mm-hmm. art that we have with 3D World, and I'm noticing this with um, the new Mario Party game on 3DS with mm-hmm. the character portraits, and again with Mario, Super Mario, and so mm-hmm. again, it's really nice seeing that cartoony, expressive Mario. Company. Oh yeah, I'm very happy again. to see that. I mean, that they're also using it on like their on the Japanese websites and like in the promo materials. Like a lot of times, uh, they would show off like them just doing things with the hardware or whatever like there's one where they're playing like uh wii u and mario's just chilling out on a chair and it's pretty funny looking <laughs> that's nice you know um like i've seen people make jokes like uh like a joke joke edits of those kind of pictures i don't know when or where uh like it was on gaff or something but it was it was pretty funny but the <laughs> case in point the uh it's nice to see that style again and what i really yeah. hope to see someday is an actual 2d mario that looks like that Give it to the uh, give it to Goodfield who did Wario Land Shake It and have a real 2D Mario in that vein, like Super Mario Land for NX or something, where like they did Wario Land Shake It, they could do Mar- uh, Super Mario Land for NX with that 2D style, and you know maybe an actual continuation of the Mario Land series where Mario was doing all these different out of out of character things, like he, yeah. he went through a whole bunch of different stuff that you never see him do in uh, either in the main series or today. And I really like the Mario Land too, where you literally are playing levels in a Mario Mecca. Mm-hmm. I actually have <laughs> I actually have Mario Land two on uh, Virtual Console. I played Same it. Here. I played it a little bit. I got it from Club Nintendo. Same here. Mm-hmm. I also have Mario Land three. Uh, I think from Club Nintendo as well. And then it's like Mario Land series basically evolved into the Wario Land series after uh, he debuted in Mario Land two. And you know, it's just. Uh, I, uh, no, I remember there was actually going to be a new Mario Land game for the Virtual Boy before that was changed into a Wario Land Virtual Boy. Well, either way, that, that was that that Wario Land game on the Virtual Boy is to this day one of the best games on the Virtual Boy. Not saying much when there's only like a couple dozen games on the Virtual Boy. Uh, it's something. <laughs> I remember Jules Watchem of of well the former Renegade Kid now Atui wanted to do a remake of uh, Wario Land Virtual Boy for the 3DS. He actually that did. Would... He actually did a full color concept of it uh, on Twitter. Um, I could find it for you. I could find it for you afterwards. And it looks yeah, re- like... looks really good. They should have uh, allowed him to do that. Well, Nintendo is very protective of their IPs and stuff. So no, really? them not being. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 you know what? That would be a that would be a great idea. The Warrior Land Virtual Boy coming back in some way, but I mean, Nintendo should work with Jules because he actually worked at Iguana Austin, which Retro Studios was basically the successor of. He may not have joined Retro, but uh, he basically spun out on his own. And he's been a heavy Nintendo supporter since he went independent, and I think he would uh, be a great fit uh, with Nintendo. So maybe think- he should uh, maybe ring them up and say, "Why don't we do something together?" That that would be really nice. Because hey, if 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 one of the only if one of the few indie developers I can really see Nintendo actually thinking of working together with, it, even just one person, Jules would actually be up there on the list. Well, Cause Nintendo because he's not one to want to screw Nintendo over or anything. He wants to he he makes good games. He makes he's very capable. I mean, now even when he was back back at Iguana Austin, he did some good shit. And uh, and of course afterward he he did like Dimension uh, 3D uh, Moon Chronicles. Um, 
Mutant Muds and whatnot, and those are and those were pretty good, really good games. And don't forget Zeo Dr- Zeo Drifter as well. Those are really good games, and from a very small team. And now at Atui, he's actually making his first um, major new game. Well, major quote unquote at his new well, new again quote unquote company Atui, which is Chicken Wiggle, which is uh, this weird Mario Maker meets Banjo Kazooie literally uh, game. I don't know if you've seen that or not. I never saw it before. Is it what you? It's what I'm imagining with. Like a 3D platformer take on Mario Maker? No, it's a, it's a, it's think Mutant Muds, but it stars a chick with a worm in a backpack. Literally, Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> I can, I can also link you to that. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, literally, it's a, uh, it's, it's one of the major hooks, and uh, is that uh, you, you play as a, it's a 2D platformer, like you know, 16-bit looking 2D platformer, and it's also going to be on iOS, but it's mainly a 3DS game, and. You can make use of, in a Mario Maker esque mode. You can actually create your own stages. That's cool. And I assume it's going to be pretty cheap because the so the whole spirit of Atui is where um, it, it was definitely going to be a smaller scale than Renegade Kid was. In fact, Renegade Kid literally split in two to form where Jules went to uh, Atui, which is actually a company he formed a decade ago but hasn't really used until like last year. And the other half is by, what's his name, Greg something, who formed Infantismo, or Infantismo, or whatever, and, and that's basically the 3D side of Renegade Kid, the same guy who mainly was mainly behind Moon Chronicles, Ren- uh, Dimension 3D, Dementium, whatever. Mm-hmm. Where, so Jules was always a 2D guy at uh, Renegade Kid, but they, they basically worked together on everything. So That's cool. But Thank now you, this. But now they're sort of basically doing their own, th- what they specialize in. So you'll only see, like, retro-esque 2D games from Jules now. Well, that's really cool. And um, he might be making the f- 3DS port of Mania if I know. Sega approaches him. I know, and um, I- I'm sure that's all- that's still very much in in the cards for him if as long as Sega say yes. Because it's not like, it's it was, it's going to be a, t- a port of a 2D game anyways. That's, and that's something Jules himself said, let me do that. It's not something that's going to change just because he went. He's now not a Renegade Kid anymore, and now his own more independent, like independent of an independent, if you will, company. Well, again, thank you for telling me all this stuff about Renegade Kid because I never really knew some of this stuff before. So thanks for the information. No worries. Um, but yeah, how so, about how about that mobile stuff? Yeah, we was on topic. <laughs> I don't even remember how we got to there. <laughs> um, he was taught. I'm. I'm. He was talking about Mario, and it eventually extended to Renegade Kid. But let's go all oh, right, right, the right. way. It was because of the Virtual Boy Wario uh, Wario Land yes. thing. That's so right. Let's, yeah, so let's go all the way back and kind of close everything off with our thoughts on Pokemon Go. Yeah, I was because... going to say that. And we should talk about Pokemon Go. We haven't done that at all yet. No, and especially since they're going to be since they announced a Pokemon Go companion app for the I'll Watch, mm-hmm. where you can use the bait. It's basically the, you know the Pokemon Go accessory that Nintendo's trying to sell. Yeah, the Pokemon basically Go Plus, that, which ironically looks like a watch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It essentially is the natural evolution, where instead of just a little thing that beeps to let you know Pokemon are nearby and stuff, mm-hmm. you can actually see the screen and see the Pokemon matters, items, and just so on and so forth. So. Again, it, it, it's another way. Ninten- not a way Nintendo's kind of working with mobile, working on mobile. And even though it's not technically Nintendo, it's still nice to see Pokemon mm-hmm. get such massive exposure. Oh yeah, like I'm really happy to see that Pokemon is literally back and and just uh, swinging it, like hitting all the gears or whatever they call it, uh, firing mm-hmm. all cylinders, whatever. Just that, uh, I mean, just recent, like yesterday, I got a new Pokemon magazine, uh, Pojo's uh, Pokemon Ultimate 20th Anniversary Edition or whatever, and this is from Pojo, who hadn't made a Pokemon magazine in almost 20 years. Wow, that's I, I made a thread really on, on I made a thread of it on Gaff, and it just blew, blew my fucking mind when I saw that. I was like, I had to get it, and I did. I've actually found it in a local bookstore, and I managed to get it for like a little less than $20 Canadian. So that's really good. Mm-hmm, and it's packed. I mean, it's basically a really good historical book. There are a few errors here and there. Like, if, for example, in the description for Genesect and the Legend Awakening, uh, Awakened movie, actually, uh, they actually seem to think that the Mewtwo in the movie is the original when it's clearly not. Well, either way, that's really cool to see Pokemon get a nice way, to, nice celebration of its anniversary because mm-hmm. between early this year with the new Pokemon, uh, the new 3DS. Don't forget, yeah, think- don't forget this. In Japan at the moment, they're actually bringing back 
so many of the classic original base set cards and whatnot in uh, the game fresh new reprints. Oh wow! So yep, you like base set Charizard, base set Mewtwo, like uh, some jungle cards as well, and the old promo wow. cards. Like, I I'm f just amazed that they're actually. It's basically remember Legendary Collection from years ago, like right before yeah, Wizards right, lost their that. rights. It's that again. That's nuts. That's. So I really cool. hope to see that in the West. I'm gonna so buy um, like numerous car numerous packs if they do that. You know what? This should have been what fucking Pokemon Generations was. You know, I mean mm -hmm. they 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 did these box sets of the Pokemon cards like each month. You've seen you've seen them, right? I've seen them. And they 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 have this this like unique set called Pokemon Generations, and then. What it had turned out to be uh, to have been is just like maybe more or less just repackages of re of recent cards, but that's shit. I want I want the classic cards, and that's what they're doing in Japan. Well, maybe once the licensing stuff is sorted out, they can start localizing them and selling them in the West. What licensing? I don't know. I, what what whatever's preventing them from coming to America? The only thing I can see is maybe if if Wizards had anything to do with it, but that's impossible because. I remember there being at least a couple of literal base set reprints in one of the uh, newer sets from like five years ago. There was a Hitmonchan and a Scyther reprint from base set one in one of the sets that's like a ultra rare or whatever. You can look it up on Bulbapedia. So I don't okay. think that has anything to do with it. And don't forget, the, the card, the descriptions and like the attacks are getting adjusted, so they're not like copy and pasted. They are actually okay. getting updated to be more relevant to the current metagame. Well, either way... We're likely going to be seeing them come to the West well, later. Yeah, there's the no way they're not. So, Pokemon Go, I'm so happy that that exploded <laughs> because it's. I remember seeing a video online where over 500 people were gathered in a small spot because Pokemon Go was go undergoing maintenance or something. Mm -hmm. and someone blasted the Pokemon theme song and. 500 plus people sang the original Pokemon theme in unison. That was so amazing, and it basically really made me happy that, yeah, it's nice Pokemon is back. And this year has been a really nice celebration for the IP because mm -hmm. the X and Y anime is really solid. Mm -hmm. The Pokemon, the, the, there was a whole bunch of new Pokemon cards coming out. Mm -hmm. We got the virtual console releases of red, blue, and yellow. I mean, it really yeah. feels like the 90s have come back, and that's what that makes me so happy. I mean, it's, it's not perfect. I mean, the movies still kind of suck. I mean, I saw uh, the the last one, uh, Hoopa and the Clash of Ages, and it's terrible. I haven't watched a Pokemon movie since I... Maybe Pokemon, the Pokemon Ranger movie. It's been a long time since I've I mean, watched they're, it. They're, they're, they're hit and miss. I mean, I liked Rise of Darkrai, and I liked um, Zoro, Zoroark. I forget what the title was. but And the second last one, the, the one with Diancie, was really good, especially for Canadians, because there's a lot of Canadian fan service in the film. Like, they actually go to the Eaton Center in Toronto. <laughs> that fucking oh, that's blew so my, cool. that, that blew my fucking mind. And I saw it in the theater, too. They, knew, really they knew what they were doing. They had a special theatrical showing of in Toronto. And you see, uh, like it was like the first time I saw a Pokemon movie in the theater since the fourth one, and they knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I, remember the, I remember the reactions when the Eaton Center came up. It was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, you, know what's, you know what hurts? The actual what? director of the films came to Toronto back during when X and Y launched, and I was at home at the time. It's like, when I found that out like a year later, I was like, why wasn't I there? <laughs> <laughs> he was at the, he was at Best Buy and everything. He was like at the Eaton Center. It's like, oh my god, would I even rec would I even known he was there if I was in the store uh, at the same time? Probably not. I would assume it was a very low profile thing. Like he was just wandering about, like do 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 do, just uh, looking around, do 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 do. Oh, don't oh hi there, uh, do 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 do. You know, probably like very stealthy and whatnot. Because I mean, he's a director of the Pokemon films, but I don't think he's that famous. You know, like no one's gonna recognize him. So. He probably managed to get around without anyone actually recognizing him, like going, "Oh my God, it's that guy." <laughs> well, that's still really cool, and I'm really glad that made you day. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. But my, I'm just glad that Pokemon Go released because it's basically a nice way to. It's very similar to what happened with uh, Super Mario Run. It takes the core mechanics of Pokemon, you catch Pokemon, and just let's people experience it and even if you don't play the pokemon games you can still have fun with it because mm -hmm. i would many people are catching pokemon and all they gotta do is keep releasing updates maybe have a new generation every half a year and 
you're done. Mm -hmm. You have endless game, so to speak. Well, it was just announced today that Pokemon Go has surpassed 500 million downloads. That's insane, and I think um, Nantech, the Pokemon company, and Nintendo should be really happy with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's still, like, top in the charts and everything, uh, so... It's just, uh, like, the, the brand recognition is at an all-time high. Maybe even more... Well, I don't think... I would, would you think it's higher now than it was in the 90s, like, at its peak? Hmm. That's, tough. I, That's a tough one. That's a tough question, but I like, think everything started to go downhill when Ruby and Sapphire came out. I think that's when everything started to really die down. It, I think, I think in from like the like uh, maybe the night when it when it originally came out in the West, in like nineteen ninety six, nineteen ninety seven, ninety eight, yeah. That was 90, when, oh wow, I'm off. <laughs> yeah, ninety eight is when it came to the West. It it came out in Japan in ninety six, so. 98 is when everything started to, uh, like, happen in the West. The anime, the, uh, the games themselves, Red and Blue. But, yeah, I think basically between 98 and 02, maybe 01, that's when the series was just at an all-time high. But well, when, even but, then, that's still good. Mm -hmm. I, that, that was still really great. The Pokemon caught sold a lot. We got the po we got a bunch of Pokemon movies, and they were all, su they were all surprisingly really good. I remember really liking the... Second and third Pokemon movies. I mean, I think one. I think one of the major signs of the decline was, first of all, the first three movies were distributed in theaters by Warner Brothers, but then went the fourth one uh, for the next few films was by Miramax. But mm -hmm. the thing is, while the fourth movie got a full theatrical release, the fifth one got a f extremely limited release in the West. And I think only in the U.S. because I wanted to see it, but in Canada, I don't think it showed up in theaters at all. So. After and after after the fifth one, starting with the sixth, it had no theatrical presence at all, oh. and that's when and that was like around '03, so that to me was the major the major sign of the decline. But also, um, it was at the same time when Nintendo took back took in house the card game uh, localization from Wizards, and they had a bit of okay. a falling out at that time. But everything was going swimmingly until that event happened, because I know Wizards had at least two more sets in the in the pipeline, which was Jamboree. And Legendary Collection too, but those never happened. So at the, I think in the from 1998 to like the early 2000s, that's when Pokemon was really, really huge. And I think if Nintendo keeps going on this path mm -hmm. after the launch of Pokemon Go, it could be huge again. I think another I, another sign of the decline. Not, uh, not to cut you off, I apologize. That's okay. Was uh, the Pokemon Becca that's collector okay. like my favorite magazine uh, next to Nintendo Power? It was around that same time also that they, for whatever reason, decided to change the Pokemon Becca collector to the Pokemon and anime collector, and then all of a sudden just dropped entirely and made it the anime collector. But they mm. they actually brought it back around '07 ish, and it just like out of fucking nowhere. I just saw it on the shelves again. I was like, what? <laughs> But uh, but the uh, but the but they lost their their classic artist. You remember the old terrible artwork that you ever see in like the Becca Collector covers and all that, the the, the, the 3D and all that. Such yeah. such awesome nostalgia. But the the guy the guy left back at uh, I think like the mid 2000s. He also did the Dragon Ball Z Becca Collector and Yu Gi Oh collectors and all that. And he was he was just, like he was it was really weird. But you love that. It's the kind of weird art the art you love. You know. Maybe it's because of nostalgia, but just the weird the the weird interpretations of the Pokemon. Like you ever see like I saw like one back cover where Mew was like all uh like you know, this rapper outfit with a skateboard and everything just looking all hip and <laughs> such. That's the kind of stuff you see on Beckett. But you know who else actually did artwork for Beckett? You're gonna what? if you don't know this already, you're gonna be your your mind's gonna be fucking blow. What you is ready? It? Yeah, I'm ready. Ken Penders. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Ken Penders did artwork for uh, the Beckett Collectors. Oh, wow. Yep, wow. you can actually see, if you remember one of them, is where during a presidential election, you see Pikachu on a stand, and you see all these characters like Bugs Bunny and even Sonic appears on the, on, and on the, on the cover or, what, or whatnot. And this it is, makes and sense. This is, this is before Sega went third party, I think. No, it just makes sense, because Ken Penders um, wrote the Sonic comic, comic, so Sonic popping up makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah, 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 you actually see him just looking at the uh, screen and just doing a thumbs up or whatever, where everyone else is just looking at Pikachu. <laughs> uh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that this is not being rude, but... Oh, no, no, um, you want to you wanna wrap it up here? Would that be okay with you? Absolutely. Uh, no, I... I, I you you say you want to make it short, and we've already passed a half hour. We're just about the forty minute mark, actually. 
So yeah, um, do you want to? Do you have any final thoughts before we um, wrap up? I, sure, thanks, man. Um, I just want I just want to say that um, first of all, thank you guys for listening because we it was it was really nice talking about Nintendo and how they how they're jumping into mobile and also having a nice fun talk about Pokemon and Mario and Wario Land. So I hope you guys enjoyed our conversation. And uh, we we might ha- we're gonna have an NX predi- predictions podcast once we hear a damn announcement date for that stupid event. I know. I think at this point it's just gonna be a direct. It's not gonna be a live it, event anymore. Um, I I we might see something on the thirteenth, maybe. I don't know, but who knows? Uh, I'm I'm a bit divided on when it's gonna happen, but we'll 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 cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, my final thoughts is that I hope you guys had a fun time listening to us talk about Nintendo, mm-hmm. and um, hope you have a good night if you're listening to this at night, or a good morning if you're listening to this in the morning. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, thank you very much, for everyone, for listening as well. And yeah, that's I'm basically um, done giving my thoughts. I don't really have anything else to add. Uh, I guess the only thing I wanted to uh, ask was, but we probably don't have much time. It's just, do you think Nintendo could do could make their own phone? Hmm. I don't. Yes. I don't, you think so? I think if they find a, maybe they could work with Apple, like a special Apple themed Nintendo phone, like maybe a special version of the iPhone 8 next year, maybe with Nintendo apps being pre-installed, like maybe an, a Nintendo themed phone. I don't but know. I can't really. I, I can't really. Im- oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I can't really imagine a Nintendo phone phone, but I can imagine Nintendo once they have a really big mobile presence after this year, they likely will start having deals with these different carriers. Maybe have some Nintendo apps pre-installed mm-hmm. or special phone cases bundled based on like Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, whatever, bundled with different phones. But but, but you don't I'm think not sure. you don't you don't think that Nintendo could just do one independently, like no Apple, no Google support, just. There, they'll be like the major third wing, or or sorts like, or like me, what Microsoft's doing with the with the Windows Phone, because that's on their own, I think. I don't think so. I think they they'll they'll look best as a big partner to someone, but not not on their own. They they already have enough on their plate trying to peel the console game. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's almost the, it's almost the same thing as them doing a console on a handheld. It's just maybe not in their capacity anymore to do two f- systems. Which, they a just phone can't. Would, which a phone would almost surely be, but not only that, they have to worry about the, um, oh, what's, what's the word? Like you know, working with uh, providers and all that, and yeah, yeah, shipping yeah. to all these uh, stores or whatever. And it's just like they they should just stick to the more license, not licensing, but you know, just the, the <clears throat> smaller thing they're doing right now. And it's working. Yeah, I think it's working wonders. It is working wonders. Pokemon Go is a big hit. Mimoto got a good amount of success. I am willing to bet that the Super Mario Runner game is going to be a big holiday hit. Oh, yeah. And Don't forget, Mario Maker 3DS is coming out in December as well, so that's going to get a huge boost. That's that. I think that that was purposeful. That's why Nintendo announced it's coming in December, folks. Yeah. And maybe that's why they, they maybe that's why they made the 3DS version in the first place. Yeah, it's actually it's almost a genius idea, in fact. Especially since new Super Mario Brothers U is part of this, so people who like Super Mario Run could try to emulate that as much as possible with uh, Mario Maker 3DS. Absolutely. It's actually uh, interesting if they might actually get Mario U content in on the 3DS when they already have new Super Mario Brothers 2 on the 3DS. Why didn't they use that instead? Hmm. Hmm. I- interesting. But at the very least, we have a very clear idea what Nintendo is doing with mobile. And we're very, and I'm personally excited to see what they do with the different franchises on mobile in the future. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so uh, we've uh, we dragged this uh, this conclusion long enough. Um, so yeah, me, this is me on RK64, 128.3, whatever. <laughs> you, with the, <laughs> you with the different numbers. I don't know. It's uh, I don't, that's my Twitter thing. It's weird. I'm sorry. I like just calling you RK in general. You know? Yeah, let's just let, let's just stick with that. From now on, on doing these podcasts are just RK. Is, mm-hmm. that, is that good? Yep, RK. All right. No, RK at the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? This is that's a great way to close the discussion. A nice pun. <laughs> Good job. Good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you very much, RK, uh, for joining me as always. Uh, always. No problem, man. It was a lot of fun. Let's let's see. Let, let, let's let's start. Let's go. Let's run and click all the coins as we exit this podcast. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and all the one-ups that come with them. Exactly. I think I'm seeing one right now. Ba-ding. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night, everyone. Yeah, and uh, good night for me as well, and to you too, RK. So, yep, this is Zero Legend RK signing off. Thank you for uh, listening. We'll be back hopefully soon enough with, uh, you know, NX-related stuff. So, see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.